Thank you for watching this video. If you want more of these videos, I bring them to you weekly. I post them every week early in the week. Uh, make sure you're subscribed to this YouTube channel. All right, uh, tough weekend for Oregon State. They get whacked at Colorado. They look non-competitive. Tough weekend for the Ducks. They lose again. A lot of questions about Mark Helfrich's future and the warming seat beneath him. But before we get to all that, I want to uh, maybe brighten things up and lighten the load a little bit by talking about three entities that had worse weekends than Oregon and Oregon State. I sifted across America and found three cases, including this quarterback from Duke. He's in the end zone. It's a pass. Get your head on a swivel, there are defenders coming, pow, that guy had a worse weekend than Oregon and Oregon State, as you can see right there, at least a more painful weekend. Um, another entity, or another person that had a worse weekend than Oregon and Oregon State would have to be this Tennessee receiver. I've seen cases of college football players or NFL players who cross the goal line without the football, but I've not yet seen a receiver just kind of forget that there were 11 defenders on the field and kind of lollygag across the goal line, being separated from the football, of course. That guy had a worse weekend than Oregon and Oregon State. Also, uh, NFL action on Sunday. Big, big weekend for Matt Ryan and Julio Jones, Atlanta's offense. But a bad weekend for Carolina's defense, as you can see here. It was like Groundhog Day over and over and over again. Matt Ryan with 500-plus passing yards. Julio Jones with 300-plus receiving yards. Those guys on the opposing team had a worse weekend than Oregon and Oregon State, I would argue. All right, but let's get back to the Ducks and the Beavers. And I want to start with the, with the Ducks, of course. Uh, they go to Washington State. They lose. They get pushed around the field. It uh, didn't surprise me that Washington State had success. Uh, I said last week that Washington State might score 70 points on this Ducks defense. Probably should have scored 70 points on the Ducks defense. Uh, what really surprised me was how easily Washington State ran the football and how uh, easily they... Uh, went down the field, right down the field, passing, running, didn't matter. They shoved Oregon's defense around again. No playmakers on that defensive front for Oregon. And a lot of questions about the Ducks' season moving forward. Hot debate this week about Mark Helfrich's future. Does he deserve time? You know, Mark Helfrich inherited this program from Chip Kelly. And it's really the problem I have when I look at Helfrich is I look at him as a head coach and I say, is this a guy who can fix it? And does he deserve to have a wide berth when it comes to fixing it? He inherited this program. It was a blue chip program from Chip Kelly. Um, he has taken it now to a point where they look like they might be a three-win team this season. They're void of playmakers. I don't love their recruiting classes. And I don't know that it gets brighter moving to the future. But the problem for Oregon really lies in the big question, if you flush Helfrich at the end of this season, who do you hire? Who's out there? This is a program that has relied uh, for the last three decades on promoting people from within, keeping and retaining the assistant coaches, the strength and conditioning coach has been there forever, and keeping the culture around Oregon and, and, and infusing Nike within that. I don't really see an error uh, apparent to Mark Helfrich sitting in the wings. There's no Chris Peterson who was once once there. There's no Jeff Tefford who was there. It's probably way too early to go to Scott Frost uh, and, and reach back into the Chip Kelly era. And frankly, Chip Kelly himself is never coming back. It would be an admission of defeat for Chip Kelly to return from the NFL in a year uh, to take the Oregon job. So that's not happening either. So get that out of your head. So I don't think you can fire Mark Helfrich if you don't know who you're going to replace him with. So answer that question. And also tell me, does the guy deserve a wide berth? I mentioned that earlier. Rich Brooks, I thought, deserved it because he built the program. And Mike Bellotti, who had some tough years, I thought deserved it because you know he was still building the program somewhere. And Chip Kelly, frankly, built this thing uh, to uh, a two-time national champion contender. So if this were Chip Kelly in the hot seat, I would say absolutely he deserves a wide berth. But Mark Helfrich is a different beast. He inherited this thing. He's now taken it to a point where it's looking like a three or four or five win season and a team that's probably not going to make a bowl game. And you look at that and you ask yourself, hey, does this guy deserve it? You answer me that. Post it in the comment section. My, For me personally, I think if you have the coach that you know can fix this, you make the move at the end of the season. If you don't have that guy, you give Helfrich another year and see if he can figure it out. But I wouldn't change just for the sake of changing. I'm as frustrated as a lot of Duck fans out there. I'm as disappointed in where Oregon is. Uh, there's no way they should be in this position. Uh, and I have reasonable doubt on whether or not Helfrich can fix it. But unless you know that guy, if it's Charlie Strong, if it's Tom Herman at Houston, there's somebody there who you know can take this program to another place and that's your guy. Because 
uh, you do that at the end of the season because you're going to have to flush out 30 years of culture. You're going to have to start all the way over, and I think that's a scary proposition if you're Oregon. Keep an eye on that, but I join Duck fans in their frustration with where this program is today. On the quarterback front, a lot of people call, calling for Mark Helfrich to start Justin Herbert this, this uh, next Saturday against Washington. I think that would be an absolute disaster. Washington comes into this game looking formidable. It's got a great front seven, great pass rush. They're tough on defense. I think that could be a recipe for a disaster if you're Justin Herbert starting your first game. So if I'm Mark Helfrich, I do not start the young guy. At some point of this season, though, He's going to have to get him meaningful snaps. He's going to maybe have to start him in a game or two down the road. And that's where we get into a little tricky situation. Because if you're Mark Helfrich, you've got to win football games. And you've got to win them now for this season, possibly to save your job. But if you are a Duck fan, you kind of want to see Oregon get itself in a position where it doesn't have to rely upon a first-year starter next year. Keep in mind, Royce Freeman gone to the NFL draft uh, by all accounts. But So you don't want to have to rely on Oregon starting all the way over at quarterback next year. So it's a really tricky dilemma for Mark Helfrich to manage, but I think one that he puts off at least for a week. You do not put Justin Herbert in a situation against Washington getting his first college start as a freshman. For Oregon State fans, Look, I think uh, this week presents an opportunity to be competitive. I know Cal's good, but I look at the schedule for Oregon State, and I see this Cal game, and I see the November 19th game against Arizona as the two opportunities I think that Oregon State can stay in football games against Pac-12 opponents. I was in Colorado. I saw the disparity in talent between Oregon State and Colorado. And this is a Colorado program who I think is the best team in the Southern Division. I think Colorado is going to play in the Pac-12 championship game. But... It's taken Colorado three years of Mike McIntyre failing and losing. And after this football game, I went to Gary Anderson and I said, do you, you know, Gary Anderson's 0-10 now in Pac-12 games at Oregon State. And I said, do you realize that Mike McIntyre went 1-20 in his first 21 games? The, the point being, this took time for Mike McIntyre to get a, a team that was passable and pretty decent on the field. Gary Anderson looked at me like he needed a drink. Like he, and he told me later, I didn't know that. He said, I didn't know it took him that long. And I, I was a little bit surprised that Anderson didn't know it, but I also think it was a huge eye-opener for Oregon State. And this is a slow build, and it's a tough rebuild. And you're in a conference where it's extremely tough to get yourself from the bottom, which was where Oregon State finds themselves, to a passable position in conference play. So, again, for Duck fans who are wanting to make a wholesale change with the coaching staff, I caution you, it is a tough thing to do a total rebuild, even with the resources, even with the football facility. So, slow your roll a little bit there. Let's see how Mark Halford reacts to this. And if you're an Oregon State fan, I do judge these programs by different standards, fair or not. Oregon State did not play in two national championship games in the last five years. The point for Oregon State is to be competitive in games. I still believe in Gary Anderson. I don't think I'm wrong about Gary Anderson. I think he's a good football coach. I think he'll figure it out. I just don't think he has players. Again, the theme being, he knows X's and O's. He doesn't have Jimmy's and Joe's. So if you're Oregon State, you need better players. You need more physical players. And I think... Uh, Gary Anderson needs another year to get to the point where they're going to really be in football games and probably two seasons, if we're being real, before they start seeing results on the field. Do you have that kind of patience? I do, because I'm looking at a program that was 2-12 and in Mike Riley's last 14 Pac-12 games. Keep an eye on that. Also, um, look, keep an eye on the athletic director search at Oregon State. So Gary Anderson has to be really nervous and particularly interested in what Dr. Ed Ray, the university president, is going to do there. There's nobody with more at stake than Gary Anderson. He's got a contract. He's trying to build something. Facilities are super important. He's going to need somebody in that AD's chair who believes in him and knows him. Scott Barnes at Pittsburgh being the obvious choice, former Utah State AD who worked with Anderson there. But if Oregon State goes outside the box and hires somebody who doesn't know Gary Anderson, I think it could possibly spell uh, trouble for Gary Anderson because uh, I think it's going to take him, like I said, a year or two before he starts to see results on the field. Will that AD have enough patience? Keep an eye on that. Uh, my picks for the week, Washington will beat Oregon. It will be about 100-3. to three. In all seriousness, it's going to be ugly. This is a perfect storm for Washington. Husky fans, you're going to leave the stadium laughing like clowns because this has been 12 years in the waiting and you've got the better football team clearly. Oregon cannot compete with Washington. They will not compete with Washington on Saturday. They are going to uh, get pushed all around that field by the more physical Huskies team. 
And also very emotional Huskies team for this for this win. It's trouble for Oregon in a lot of ways. Oregon State fan, I think you look at Cal and you look at the conference as a whole. Cal just played a great game against Utah. A very, very physical game on the goal line. I think Oregon State loses this game. But I think it's a game that they're kind of in in a number of ways. And I would expect the Beavers to kind of hang around uh, hopefully better than they did against Colorado. They were a non-factor there. All right. Signing off now, make sure you subscribe to this channel. You won't miss any of these videos. And post your comments below. Tell me what you think. Would you have more patience with Mark Helfrich? And if you're a Beaver fan, do you have a year and a half to two years to wait for Gary Anderson to figure it out? I'll see you down the road.